Hey there tech fans, Rick here again from the O-Ray team. In today's video, I'll cover some of the common mistakes that many people make with a simple HDMI connection. Now it should be a really easy thing to connect up that brand new piece of shiny media gear that you just came home from the store with to your widescreen TV. And in most cases it is. I mean, we've all done it. You'll unbox the product, plug it into the wall, and then realize you don't have an HDMI cable. So you'll head down to the basement, rummage around for a little bit until you find one, connect it to the device, find an open port on your monitor, connect it up over there, cross your fingers, and normally everything works just fine. But there's a lot going on underneath the covers of that HDMI standard to make that happen, and it's important you understand what affects that because, in some cases, it may dramatically impact the quality of the audio and video that's being sent to the monitor, and in other cases, it may prevent the device from working at all, and I'd like to help you avoid those pitfalls. So in this video, I'll start off by describing two aspects of the HDMI standard that affect the cable, the cable length, and the cable quality. And then I'll dive a little bit deeper into some of the hidden features inside the HDMI standard that can really simplify your media setup and greatly expand the control you have over your media equipment. Most folks don't realize that the length of an HDMI cable can affect its performance. Like all cables, the longer an HDMI connection is, the more signal loss there is as well. That's why it's important to keep your HDMI cables as short as possible. The physical limit of a cable depends on a number of factors, such as the resolution of the media you're carrying and the type of additional features included in the HDMI standard that you're using. In general, if you're watching 1080p content, you are limited to a 30-foot HDMI cable connection for best results. You may be able to extend this slightly farther if you have a higher quality cable, but normally not longer than 50 feet. If instead you're watching 4K content, the limit is 10 feet for the highest quality picture. This is especially true if you're taking advantage of features like ARC or CEC with your media gear. Here again, you may be able to stretch this out to 15 feet depending on the cable quality. So now you can see how the length of an HDMI cable can have a big impact on the content you can display. And the rule of thumb is to keep the cable as short as possible between your media devices and your monitor for best results. Now in this next section, I'll explain how the quality of the cable can also impact both the resolution of the content you can display, and more importantly, how it affects some of the underlying features that are really powerful in HDMI. Cable quality is another important consideration, and there have been several key improvements to the HDMI standard over the years that can affect the quality of your media. HDMI 1.4 was released back in 2009 and was a common standard for watching HD content in a 1080p resolution or even some 4K content at 30 frames per second. This type of cable is fine for older monitors and media equipment, but in most cases could not handle today's modern video standards. In 2013, HDMI 2.0 was released, which fully supports 4K media at 60 frames a second. This ultra-high definition content was becoming common in most homes and required a higher quality cable to carry these signals. Shortly after this, in 2017, the HDMI 2.1 standard was released, which supported even higher resolutions and bit rates. This standard could accommodate 4K content up to 120 frames per second and even higher 8K and 10K content that will follow in the future. This is the latest standard used in media equipment being sold today and offers support for all common media types. The cable quality you choose for enjoying these different formats is important as well, and there are some basic industry terms for these cable selections. A standard HDMI cable is fully compatible with the earlier HDMI 1.4 specification and is the most common cable in use today. This cable is fine for all 1080p content and even some 4K content at 30 frames per second. The next best cable style is a high-speed HDMI cable, which is slightly more expensive. This upgraded cable has better shielding and more robust wiring to handle ultra-high definition content up to resolutions of 4K at 60 frames per second. This is a great cable choice if you have newer media gear or monitors and is fully HDMI 2.0 compliant. It also supports both ARC audio, HDCP, and CEC functions within the HDMI standard. You may have to spend a little more on this style of cable, but it's well worth the investment for the higher resolution media it can provide. The newest cable type on the market is the ultra high speed HDMI cable, which is designed to carry even higher resolutions and frame rates. These HDMI 2.1 cables are perfect for 4K content at 120 frames per second and will even support future content of 8K and higher. 
These are the most expensive cables available today, but essentially future-proof your media setup for years to come. When searching for an ultra-high-definition HDMI cable, be sure to check for its certifications. This assures you that it has been tested to adhere to the standards required for this classification. Finding the right type of cable is easily the biggest mistake that most consumers make when adding a new piece of media gear to an existing setup. Now, both of these cables look very similar, but this one can only support 1080p content, whereas this one, which is an ultra-high-speed HDMI cable, can easily handle 4K content and even higher resolutions and frame rates. And the goal here is to find a cable that you can afford that supports the equipment you have today in both ends of the connection, but you may want to actually upgrade to a little better cable than you need to be able to support future content so you don't have to worry about upgrading the cable when you upgrade your media content. The higher quality cables also do a really good job of supporting a lot of the underlying features inside of HDMI, which I'll get into next. And this first feature will greatly simplify your audio setup. ARC, or Audio Return Channel, is a feature of HDMI that allows you to simplify your cable connections with newer audio equipment. With older systems, you would have to connect your media device, like a DVD player, to your TV with an HDMI cable, and then connect the audio from your TV to your soundbar with an analog or digital cable. While this worked okay for older audio formats, it limited the quality of the audio the system could produce. With newer ARC-compatible gear, you're still making the same HDMI connection between your DVD player and TV, but can also make a second HDMI connection from the ARC port on your TV to your new soundbar. This connection allows the TV to send the sound from whatever content is being played to the soundbar directly. It also allows the TV to become the central point for your media, and if you change inputs, the sound for that new input is sent along to the soundbar as well. This greatly simplifies the connections in your media center and also provides a much higher quality of audio from the soundbar. ARC is a great feature that's part of the HDMI standard that can really simplify the connections required between your media gear and your audio system and can really deliver some incredibly good audio. A few things to keep in mind. There are two versions of ARC on the market, ARC and a newer version called EARC, which basically operates the same. But as always, check your user manual to make sure you've enabled a feature on all of your equipment. Always use an ARC or EARC port on both pieces of equipment, and use the highest quality HDMI cable you can afford to enable that feature. Now this next underlying feature of HDMI is called CEC, which again will greatly simplify the control of your media devices. CEC stands for Consumer Electronics Control and is a part of the HDMI standard that can simplify the control of your media devices. It essentially creates a network over the existing HDMI connections to allow your devices to share control signals from a single remote. If you're not using CEC, you'll have an individual remote for each media device you're using. This requires you to juggle these remotes to enjoy your content. With CEC, you can use a single remote to control all of your devices because the signal needed to control all of these devices is passed over the HDMI connection. This allows you to eliminate the collection of remotes on your coffee table and greatly simplifies your media setup. CEC is one of the most powerful features that are built in HDMI and the one that most consumers don't know about, but it can really simplify your remote control setup because in this particular case, I've got four different remotes controlling each of these individual pieces of equipment. By turning on CEC, I can use one remote to control all the functions I normally access, like volume adjustments, menu, and control over the media. It's important you understand that CEC is built into most modern media equipment, but manufacturers may call it something different, so it's always important to check the manual to see what this manufacturer calls it and make sure you've enabled it. Once you've turned it on, you can pick any remote control you have and use that to control all your equipment. Now this last feature I'm going to talk about that's part of HDMI is called HDCP and this is a really important one because a lot of consumers can sort of trip over this one if they're not using the right style of cable or they have older media gear, you may have issues actually watching your content on your monitor. So I'll explain that next. HDCP, or High Bandwidth Digital Copy Protection, is designed to prevent the copying of high-definition content. It's a security mechanism that is built into most modern media devices and controls the playback of that content. When you first connect a new device to your monitor and power them both up, playback of the content is initially locked. These two devices then perform a digital handshake to identify themselves as HDCP-compliant devices. This unlocks the playback and allows you to enjoy your content. 
If either device is not HDCP compliant, or you're using an older HDMI cable that doesn't support HDCP, you won't be able to view the content. So you can see how HDCP can be one of those things that can really cause you issues if you're not aware of the reasons it may not work with your new setup. And that's all I had for today. So hopefully you found all this information helpful. I've tried to give you some suggestions you can use to avoid some of these common pitfalls that relate to HDMI and make your setup a whole lot easier. So until next time, thanks again for watching.